Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This one, I am super excited to actually do this match because I actually have Ball in the uh, live Twitch chat. And he actually has the WGT tag, which lets me know he is old school, although I will admit I do not recognize his name from the old school stuff, perhaps under a different thing. I don't think I, yeah, I don't think I've casted him before. But I know he's an old school dude. And I will also admit, this was something I was gonna, I was kind of talking to in chat a little bit. Chobo Lee is probably the hardest casts I do. Primarily because I am not a deeply skilled Starcraft. By the way, ball starting. This is a tough match to cast the first time. This is the other one I really wanted to redo because look at this. You've got this kind of yellow color. You'd think this was greenish, right? But no, yellow at the uh, 9 o'clock position, 8 o'clock position approximately, 12 o'clock position we have Hoff. But if you look at these two colors, outside, of, I have to rely on the minimap here. I think that's the other thing that really threw me off about this match in particular is I had to rely on the minimap uh, to do stuff. I really wish they made these two colors more distinguished, but I think it's up to the community now. <laughs> Blizzard has abandoned us! Gotta go grassroots, which I actually think is a good thing. That's another rant altogether. Anyway, Chobo League, uh, I've done a lot of my casting experience. just comes from like thinking about things and uh, getting feedback from players and, and talking. And actually, I have Gretorp in chat as well. Special shout out to him. I'm hoping he gets back into the games. But... Uh, Gretorp actually gave a great tip. He was like, in the last match, he's like, when the observers don't meet in the middle, you know that there is a divergence in build. Uh, to which I replied, I know that is the case when you have two players that are at basically the precise same skill level that are executing their build orders perfectly in PvP. But I don't know that's always the case for round of 16 Chobo League. In fact, we saw, I think, Hoff kind of... And Hoff, if, uh, if he's watching this, he can let me know. It seemed like he was waffling with his build. Two-gate opener, by the way. I believe this is because you have a... This is a non-ramped map, as you can see. And when Zealots don't have to deal with a single blockade high ground, that makes them just a little bit more powerful. We do see Hoff mirroring this build. He's getting the double gateway. This time, Ball with the earlier scout. Sorry, actually, both players scouting about the same time. Ball got a little bit of an earlier scout inside the base. Missed that. Pylon, no gas yet from either player. And there are being Zelts produced from both standard two gate opener. Two gate, not the uh, 11, 11, 10, or 12, 11, you know, the early gate, the two gate rush. Uh, anyway, point being, Chobo League's difficult for me uh, and will, I hope, improve me as a caster overall because uh, it's a little bit more challenging because I don't have that baseline thing to say this is. This is, uh, it's easier when you're dealing, it's kind of the Artosis thing where he talks about, by the way, we see gas earlier from Hothball has not yet popped gas, which might give him an opportunity to produce additional Zealots or things along those lines. One Zealot is just pressuring that probe, one Zealot pressuring the probe opposite corner as well. Neither player is sending out a lot of Zealots uh, for a forward attack. We do have another Zealot here near the front. But anyway, it's kind of the Artosis thing, where Artosis, a lot of Brood War is expected information. And he says, oh, I can't beat this guy because he's so bad, <laughs> which is, it's to degree true. Um, not that it's so bad, it's just that when you have certain expected information out of the... You expect people to do certain things within certain knowledge, and it's kind of like when you're playing against someone who's not making that same assumptions, oftentimes you end up with missing information. Um, which, yeah, it's just... I mean, it's true of life, it's true of everything. It's hard to... It's amazing that any of us are able to communicate anything, is really what I guess I'm trying to get at. And... Brood War almost feels like one of those, yeah, meta-conversational things that happens between two players. And I think that's something special about it. I'm getting into weird metaphysical spaces now with this commentary, which is going to make it extra special. But yeah, I think that's part of what it is. is it's almost like an, an odd dance. Zealots moving out. This is going to be four Zealots versus five, but I think Hoff is going to have the closer reinforcement point. Trying to get the spread. One Zealot backed off, so he's going to lose that advantage. Some nice micromanagement from Ball actually doing good focus fire. So now four Zealots fleeing from five with an additional Zealot making his way across. Still no Cybernetics, or sorry, Cybernetics Core has finished for Hoff. Do we have a Cybernetics Core opposite side? Cybernetics Core just finishing opposite corner. Ball needs to be careful because he's got a distance reinforcement location, but another good engagement. And that's going to put him up another Zealot because they were, in, again, the concavity uh, provided some support. He's going to start working on this pile and needs to be careful attacking in this base. Another Zealot picked off. He's done a fantastic job with his Micro, and the Micro's just been superior here at this stage. Four ball. The engagement points, the reinforcements, the concavity across the board. You can see there was just a little bit of missed Micro there where he ended up hitting that pylon instead, but it's still four Zealots versus two. And most of that is because of his superior micromanagement in this fight. Probes being pulled off the line. Probably at least one probe has died at this stage. That's two probes. 
I think, and three probes that have been disrupted there, and they're re-engaging, going after the Dragoon as well, and I don't know how he microed in the midst of that. That was just absolute chaos, but that was an immense amount of disrupted mining time as well for Hoff. He's got two very weak Zealots. He does have the two Dragoons, Ball wisely going ahead and backing off that attack at this stage. He's plopping down an additional gateway. He's got his range working now. Range is about dead even for both of these players. But the significant shift here is Hoff is going to be down a probe. And Ball... Uh, and actually, how did Hoff manage this? I'm looking at the supply count. I'm looking at the army moving out. And oddly enough, uh, Hoff, through just pure micromanagement and determination, actually has kept things uh, somewhat even. So three Dragoons pressing, plus two, uh, two Zealots behind. A probe making its way out, and I assume this is a scouting probe to see what he's up against. Ball does have uh, three gateways down, so I think he's going to have superior production and a closer reinforcement point, so Hoff needs to be careful. Hoff now going ahead and backing out. So perhaps a misread on my part as far as the conclusion to the previous fights. Just losing some additional Zealots robotics facility uh, down so Ball can get additional information. But maybe it, actually what it came down to is, and this is the, the nature of StarCraft, and I like what Hoff's doing here. He's kind of pressing to that natural where he's not committing his forces, but he is going to be in position to maybe pick off a drone or at least usher the rest of these units out. Now Ball feeling that he's got enough units to kind of engage this, getting a nice hit right there, <clears throat> pushing out the Zealot, trying to scoop by and go for that weak Dragoon, and unfortunately, nothing, nothing doing there, so he's probably going to lose that Zealot. Yep. Uh, things just about even. Ball up now two probes. But it, but sometimes you're spending so much time micromanaging uh, that you kind of miss building probes and whatnot. I'm wondering if that was happening there. Fourth gateway for Ball. Back corner from Hoff. Hoff still sitting at three. Get, he ha He's just now getting his robo up, and I believe the robo is finished with that observatory. So actually, the turnaround macro for Ball has put him up nine supply overall. And I'm wondering if I just... I think I just had these flipped. Had these flipped. I'm going to let it stand for this cast. Hoff sitting in position. He's looking to take his natural expansion. Ball moving up. He's got uh, his Dragoon Force. He does have range. He does have four gateways, which is more of a pressure attack build. When you have this many gateways, you want to commit with those attack forces because it is an investment. Probably going to wait the, for the Observer so he knows what he's up against. Shield Battery plopping down for Hoff. I like that move, actually. But Ball moving forward before it is warping in. He might be able to do some damage. He's going up against in superior numbers with a closer reinforcement point. You can see the units coming across the mini-map. And with that shield battery up, he's probably going to need to back off. He's done a lot of the damage he needed to do, but this a shield battery can make up the difference in one of those gateway, almost like a full gateway's worth of units in those attacks. And you can see Ball, yeah, losing this overall attack force instead, but trying to draw these units away. I like this. So that he can get an engagement, drawing them away from the shield battery, and Hoff letting that happen so instead actually might lose more forces than he need to now he's trying to micro his way back against these zealots and this is where that zealot dragoon micro can be advantageous and actually pushing these units all the way back no reinforcements though so this is going to get pushed back and that was actually a significant loss for ball still three probes ahead but cr this is a n another critical thing is that i missed on the first cast so this is kind of one of those backup things where uh now ball can take his natural expansion and unfortunately for Hoff, he's going to have to destroy his own stuff. He, that shield battery and that pylon, I believe, are blocking this nexus. In fact, I know it is because he's going to have to destroy this in a second. So Ball also sitting on... Because he's sitting on three gateways, was able to sit in that uh, defensive posture. This was a larger investment from Ball. But Ball has evened it up uh, comparatively. Because this nexus is going to get down. He has a superior probe count overall. Um, and I feel like it's just showing better... Uh, micro and macro has a nice observer in the space. He's going to get a look at the gateway count. He's going to see the shuttle. I don't. This is one thing I didn't understand on the first cast either. Yeah, we have the robo here, um, but I don't know the idea behind this shuttle when you're just now taking your natural expansion. Because usually you want to build that shuttle if you're you already have a robotics facility out, uh, something along those lines. But here the reaver can probably slow crawl to the front. Honestly, maybe it's protective. I don't know. Um, if Ash is in there, if anyone in chat, if Ball wants to comment, and I'd like to hear that comment. This observer catching the complete Dragoon count. Ball knowing he has the superior, knowing the gateway count in the background, he's gone up to five gateways overall. Knowing that he has the superior Dragoon count is actually going to move up, might even be able to pick that Nexus off. His own Nexus is just warping in. 
might be able to get a Mariner. Another shield battery going down, but once again, Ball might have an opportunity to sneak in and pick this off. He's got a, a, su a superior supply count overall. The Zealot's moving across the front. Once again, the shield battery just warping in. And it's much harder to micro into your opponent's base when there's all this stuff. You can see the Dragoons are misfiring on top. So that's where they're not attacking their units. But let's see with these Dragoons backing off into the Reaver. This Reaver could be the difference in this fight. The shuttle scooped them up. Shield battery's down. Can he focus fire the Nexus and get it done? Careful. Shuttle has been picked off. And there is the Reaver shot. And that should be a signal to Ball to back off. He's going to try to concentrate on this Nexus while they can. The rest of the Dragoons peeling forward, realizing what's happening. And is that going to be a dud shot? No. And it got a huge amount of splash on a lot of Dragoons right there. Which is going to allow Hoff to push this attack back. Ball still five probes up. Still has na his natural expansion running. This Nexus, oof. Uh, down to lower than half health because keep in mind that shield's been completely peeled off But Hoff does his nat does have the natural expansion does have a tech lead now This is where I would almost want to see that shuttle and him sneaking out and trying to do drops or something along those lines uh, Two additional gateways gateway man For ball he's gone up to seven gateways, which usually I believe the equation is is full oops, full production for a Protoss player is about four gateways per Nexus so this is just shy of four gateways per nexus here, per these two nexuses with two nexi. Nexus is, a, I believe, the proper plural because it's Greek. Hoff has a probe sneaking out, and it's possible he's going to try to sneak an expansion. Another shuttle being built. Uh, good amount of dragoons to provide defense on the front. Some additional pylon being plopped down for macro-oriented purposes for Ball. Ball with a slight edge, not an insurmountable, but a significant edge thus far in the match. He is behind in that critical Reaver tech, though. And that Reaver tech can be the difference in these games. I like how these Dragoons are kind of plopped back just in case there's another shuttle coming from the opposite corner. And also, critically, I'm going to point this out. No gas taken yet from Hoff. So, and when you're going Reaver, when you're going Dragoon, when you want more of that gas-heavy stuff, that can be a critical thing. I like what Hoff's doing. Feeling like he might be in the lead here. He's going to plop down a pylon. He's like, okay, I got superior tech. I'm going for more a macro. I feel like I got my natural expansion, so he's just going to make sure that no sneaky additional expansions were taken with that previous engagement. However, I'm not sure that he realizes that Ball was able to get his natural expansion up mostly unmolested uh, much earlier than Ball. Or sorry, than Hoff. I'm switching up players again. It's the colors. I blame the colors. Hoff sneaking uh, out there, and I love this sort of play where you use pylons for forward scouting when you can't build observers, because the when you're going Reavers, that's observers you can't build. Dragoon's now peeling forward. There are two Reavers here to provide support. So this is just going to be Dra Dragoon Reaver, and it's going to come down to micromanagement and Scarab shots. More Scarabs going out. They're not hitting that back line, so they're not getting the good separated splash. And as a result, that Reaver getting picked off. Nice micromanagement. There's still another Reaver out in the field. Again, they're just hitting solitary Dragoon units, so they're not getting that full spread they want. And now the Dragoon's peeling forward, looking to pick off that Nexus, perhaps. Looks like kind of split fire, and no, that, that attack gets repelled by Ball. Nexus down to just 200 health. Still no probes in that natural expansion gas, though. Looks like Ball may be setting up to take a third. Reaver making the difference there. One critical thing, though, is that could have gone much, much better. Citadel of Dune, which suggests we're moving towards DT tech, by the way. It's possible we see Zealot leg speed. Every once in a while you'll see someone go for, like, a Zealot leg speed flood is, like, some sort of interesting attack with... Uh, Dark Templar DTs on the opposite side uh, with Citadel of Doom, but this is still four gateways of production with some Reaver support compared to just pure gateway opposite side. Probe sneaking out for scouting purposes in that corner pil like a counter pylon to kind of look and see what's out there. Hoff feeling like he might have an advantage, so starting to move out, he is going to be able to pick this pylon off. More Dragoons, and this is a critical moment in the game as well. Hoff is going to go ahead and take a sneaky expansion, sneaky snake expansion in the upper right-hand corner. And that could be the thing that wins him the game. Because right now, Ball doesn't have observers out in that corner. He doesn't have... And actually, I'm wondering what happened to the observer on the field. Did he get picked off? Possibly got, pit, got picked off. Um, doesn't have that scouting information. He knows that this expansion is blocked. That he's just sitting on gateways. DT is being built currently for Hoff. That could be a huge difference considering the complete lack of observers here. Yeah, I don't see a single observer anywhere. So I think there was an observer exchange that I missed in that last engagement. So both players playing a little bit in the dark. 
usually you'd expect Hoff to be more in the dark here comparatively just because he is, should be, yeah, continuing to pump those Reavers. So it'll come down to Reaver Micro versus Dragoon Micro, micro and whether this expansion gets detected. Forge being plopped down to provide some cannon support. And this is the dangerous situation to be in for a ball. When you think you're ahead, when you think you're in a good position, ooh, a Dark Templar. So the Dark Templar would, would have been good help against these Dragoons, particularly without an Observer right there, but Hoff has no reason to, to believe that there wasn't a, there isn't an Observer with his attack force. It's gonna make its way around. Sneaky Snake. I really do feel like DTs are, yeah, it's like one of those units where it can be an instant, uh, Artosis, uh, Artosis ran. I still love that unit. Good spread on these Reavers for this forward thing. Looks like, ooh, the Nexus picked off. Dragoon's just flooding in, picking off the Nexus, now backing out. Bit, uh, oh, and this is a very dangerous situation now, comparatively. For Ball, because he doesn't know about this expansion and that it's up. And I like what Hoff is doing right now. He First of all, he's got an engagement. He's pushing these units back. DT's actually moving into the main in the interim. So these Reavers kind of slow pushing. So big engagement here, plus the DT. Where'd the DT go? There was a DT. There it is. Attacking the Observatory. And I don't know that Ball realizes this is happening. So working on that Observatory, no Observatory being produced. And once that Observatory is down, there's going to be no ability for Ball to detect the DT out in the field. So Ball concentrating on this attack and he's missing the critical piece that, oh, is gonna lose him the game. So no observatory, a DT free roaming, plus an additional base here in this corner. Because Hoff was able to push things out in that corner, he's gonna have three bases up. In fact, he could probably at this stage uh, manure those probes. And now it is a massacre happening at Ball's natural expansion. Invisible men indeed from chat. Invisible men in, seven kills, and there's not even a forge. So there's no detection happening here. So if Ball's going to win this game, he needs to do it on a suicide attack now. And even if he gets that suicide attack off, there's still this expansion in that upper right-hand base. So Reaver pulling back with that shuttle. I, I think this is going to be it. Ball's going to have to GG. That was a very heads-up play on Hoff's part using the disruption. Pulling probes off the line to defend this because I think he knows that's all he has to defend. Well played. And this is stuff I completely missed in the first cast, by the way, which is another reason I wanted to redo it. I'm like, I missed stuff. I missed stuff, so we're going to redo it. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Congra uh, congratulations to Hoff. We're going to go into game three uh, of group one, Ball versus Hoff, momentarily.